Hasselblad is back. And while it's not exactly back in black, well, it's very dark gray. This is the brand new Hasselblad X2D, and it represents a major evolution in the Hasselblad X series of medium format mirrorless cameras. Hasselblad has also announced three new XCD mount lenses. We have a 38 millimeter, a 55 millimeter, and a 90 millimeter, all with maximum apertures of f2.5. These are all brand new designs with an added clutch feature, which is really cool, and Hasselblad are calling these V-series lenses. All are considerably faster and quieter than the previous generation. The new X2D features the familiar Scandinavian ergonomics that we saw in the X1D and the X1D2 bodies, but they have now upgraded this camera with a new 100 megapixel backside illuminated sensor, a new top display, contrast and phase detection autofocus, in-body image stabilization, we've got a flip screen now, there's one terabyte of built-in SSD storage, and some other major features that we're gonna discuss in this video. Since 2016, Hasselblad has been using the same 50 megapixel sensor in all of their medium format mirrorless bodies. This includes the X1D, the X1D2, as well as the 907X. So now we have a brand new 100 megapixel sensor, which is backside illuminated, and this allows us to get up to 15 stops of dynamic range at 16-bit color depth. So much like the 50C cameras, you can rescue both shadow and some highlight detail, which is pretty amazing. And with the Hasselblad natural color system, it looks simply outstanding. But now we have an additional stop of dynamic range, and of course now 100 megapixels of resolution. Also a first in any Hasselblad medium format camera is in-body image stabilization. This camera features five-axis stabilization developed specifically for this sensor. It delivers up to seven stops of handheld shooting in difficult conditions. Now I also I also want to add that speed is probably the thing that's impressed me the most about this camera. It's something I really didn't expect. As many of you know, I've been a big fan of all of the Hasselblad mirrorless cameras. I have the original X1D. Last year, I bought the 907X. I love those cameras. They produce an amazing image quality. However, speed has not been their strong suit, and speed has greatly been upgraded with the X2D. So if we compare startup times with the original X1D, and I realize this is six years between these two cameras, you're going to see that the X2D just starts up into live view and it's ready to go. Even if we compare this with the 907X, there still is a major upgrade in just the startup speed of the camera. Autofocus speed has also gotten a major upgrade, even when you're using the older lenses. So what's different about the X2D is now we have incorporation of 294 phase detection zones. And so the way that autofocus works is you have contrast autofocus, which is more accurate, and you have phase detection autofocus points, which are faster. Phase detection is now integrated into this camera, and you do notice a big speed difference. One of the most surprising features for me at least on the X2D is the fact that Hasselblad has one terabyte of built-in SSD storage in this camera. This allows you to write to internal storage or you can use a CF Express type B card. Now Hasselblad are stating pretty fast speeds for the SSD that they are using. They are up over 2000 megabits a second. Now the way these are rated is usually never the way they actually perform and there are other factors involved too. But if you were using the correct USB-C cable and you're plugging into a computer that has its own SSD, SSD hard drive in it, you're gonna see some pretty quick speeds. And the way I have mine set up is I just write to the internal SSD and I use my CF Express Type B card for backup. And then I have the option of plugging either one at the end of a session into the computer to copy the files. And while Hasselblad may not be the first camera to do this, if you compare this to something like the Leica M11, which is very cool, it has internal storage, it only gives you 64 gigabytes of storage. We have an entire terabyte on this camera. So let's talk about the sensor for a second. So we are getting an additional stop of dynamic range over the previous generation of Hasselblad mirrorless. So the 50C sensors, they were great. They were rated at 14 stops, but the 100 megapixel that we have in the X2D is even better. So a great deal of the image quality does come from this new sensor, but I also want to note that the processor that they're using that's been paired with this has a lot to do with it as well. The base ISO of the camera has now been changed from ISO 100 to 64. This might not seem like a big deal to some, but if you're shooting wide open on the lens and bright light, maybe outside, it does come in very handy. Another thing I found very interesting about the X2D is the way it handles higher ISO settings. So with the X1D, which I've used for a number of years, and I love that camera, the image quality that you get out of there is really awesome, but it does cap out around 1600 ISO. 3200 can be usable in a pinch, not really recommended, and of course anything above that you're going to start introducing color noise as well as just a lot of noise in general. So with the X2D, a lot of that has changed, and 
I can easily use up to 6400 without a whole lot of contrast loss. It really looks pretty good. Now, if you zoom in 100%, you can see noise at 6400, but chances are, unless you're actually printing this at one-to-one -one resolution, you're not going to see these. It's kind of an interesting thing when you downscale, you're actually rescuing noise. So I would say easily I'm comfortable using this up to 6400, and I can push it a little higher if I really want to. It's all situational, but the camera handles high ISOs very nicely. Again, the biggest difference for me is that when I'm pushing the X2D, I'm not getting any of that color noise that I got with the X1D when it came out. Now, if you're curious about low light performance, I'm going to report to you that it is excellent. But another advantage that you have to consider here is the fact that we now have in-body image stabilization. So as I mentioned, this is a five axis and Hasselblad is stating that it's gonna give you a seven stop advantage. Now, what that means in the real world depends on how you're shooting. My hands are fairly steady and I was able to shoot at one sixth of a second pretty consistently, which is very impressive considering the resolution of this camera. Your mileage could vary a little bit depending on how steady you are, but it is outstanding. Of course, this also works with non-native lenses as well, and I've gotten really excellent results with my 1961 Nikon 58mm f1.2 knocked and several of my Leica lenses that actually will cover the size of this sensor. Now, I also want to note in here that I did not use a tripod for any of the sample shots in this video. Everything was handheld, and I should mention that some of these shots that are in fairly low light, I was able to use an ISO setting of 64. That's what really good in-body image stabilization is going to do for you. So a note here about image quality, and while 100 megapixels is unbelievably cool, especially when you're zooming in, and it's very impressive, I think the thing that actually impressed me the most about this camera is the way it handles dynamic range, and in particular the way it renders color. The X2D renders color in a 16-bit color space. You can actually select between 14 and 16-bit in the quality setting in the menus. And so if you go under bit depth, 14-bit is going to increase your shooting speed, while 16-bit is going to improve your color range. So for the photos of these dancers, I used my own Fujifilm presets. These are all my Fujifilm Provia simulation that you can get in my preset pack called Fujified. I will put a link in the show description if you're interested in learning more on that. Anyway, these have more of the contrast of film, so the dynamic range is reduced in these. They're very contrasty. What I love about this sensor is it allows me to get the exposure correct with anything, basically because I have so much latitude to work with. This allows me to rescue highlight detail as well as shadow detail. It's a really incredible camera. Of course, if you're just rendering these straight out of the camera with the Hasselblad natural color system, you're going to get really incredible results as well. So let's talk about body and handling with the X2D. So if we compare this side by side with the original X1D, which was the same body as the X1D2, you can see this body is a little bit thicker and there has been a little bit of redesign up near the EVF. We have a much upgraded EVF in the X2D. But I want to note here is that the designers at Hasselblad did a wonderful job of keeping that same aesthetic as the X1D. And the reason that I say that is this is one of my favorite body styles of any camera. It's very comfortable to use. It fits well in your hand. It's well balanced. The weight is excellent. The X2D is a little bit heavier than the X1D, but if you're using the new lenses, they are indeed lighter. So it ends up being about the same. So the first major change that you might notice on this camera is the inclusion of a top display. So this has replaced the mode selection dial, which was a physical dial. That has been moved over to the side. It's now a button when you select what mode you want to be in. So the top display shows you all of your shooting info. This is really useful if you've got this on a tripod, let's say you're in the studio or you're shooting a landscape and you just want to at a glance see what the settings are. It also does a couple other things. When I insert a battery into the camera, it's going to immediately tell me how much power is left on the battery. I can also get to this if the battery's already in the camera and the camera's off by just doing one short push on the power button. And it also indicates status functions. So the other day I realized that I needed to upgrade the firmware on one of my lenses and when you're doing that, it gives you an arrow indicating that it is performing a firmware upgrade. All in all, I think this was a really smart addition to the X2D. Another addition that I really love is the press function of the rear dial. So this is custom mappable. I keep mine on zoom for critical focus. So if I press in on the dial, it will zoom in. Then I press again to zoom back out. It can also be used as a selector if you're navigating in the menus without using touch. So for instance, if you're using the EVF or something like that. Now the hot shoe on the top is Nikon 
incompatible as it was with the X1D and the X1D2. So with the Nikon flash, you can get TTL flash metering at any shutter speeds. That's because we're using leaf shutters that live in the lenses and leaf shutters will let you sync up to any speed. Most of them cap out at about one two thousandth of a second, which is pretty fast. Now the only connection port on this camera is the USB-C port. So this allows for power delivery and fast data transfer, as I mentioned earlier. Now there is no audio jack on the X2D. And some of you may recall on the X1D, firmware came out that enabled you to use that as a remote trigger release. In fact, Hasselblad even sold an accessory separately that you could buy for the camera. This will still work with the 907X, but this no longer works with the X2D. So if you want to remote trigger the camera, you're gonna have to use the Focus Mobile app. Now I wanna say this about Focus Mobile, is that with a lot of camera companies, and I review a lot of cameras, most of the applications that run on Android or iPhone are really not very good. Focus is not one of those. It's actually an excellent remote triggering app. It'll connect via Wi-Fi. It'll give you a live view. It allows you to shoot remote. It's actually really good. So if we move back to the viewfinder and rear screen, this is where things get pretty impressive. So we have a 0.5 inch, 5.6 million dot OLED EVF with a refresh rate of 60 frames a second and a magnification of 1.0X. This is one of the best EVFs I've used on any system. Now there are other cameras with high resolution EVFs that are very good. So the Panasonic S lineup, if we look at the Leica SL2 and SL2S, even the GFX100. The reason I love this one is it has a 1.0 magnification so you can really see everything in the image. It is massive and it is awesome and the refresh rate helps considerably also. Now the rear screen is a 3.6 inch, 2.36 six megapixel touch display that is now tiltable for low tripod or waist level shooting. There are actually two positions that it will tilt to. Now the menu interface has been redesigned a little bit from the X1D slash 907X cameras, mostly because they've simplified things. So it has the same intuitive icon based interface. This is one of my favorites on any camera system and they just simplified it a little bit. So if you're familiar with the old one, you're gonna work your way around the new system just fine. So let's talk for a second about autofocus on the X2D. Now autofocus in general is usually the Achilles heel with any medium format system. There are a number of reasons for that. One, you have a bigger sensor, which means you're gonna have much bigger lenses to have the coverage to cover the sensor, which means you've got more parts and they're bigger parts in the lens and there's just more to physically move. That mixed with the fact that before we only had contrast-based autofocus, now we have phase detection, which should speed things up. With the new lenses in particular, Hasselblad has done an excellent job of making this a lot faster and a much more enjoyable experience. So on the X1D and the X1D2, especially with the original lenses that were designed for this system, autofocus was just, it was accurate, it was just not fast. And it was a lot of sounds involved with everything. Hasselblad have tightened this up considerably. Even when you're using the older lenses with this camera, it's just much faster. A lot of that probably has to do with the inclusion of phase detect autofocus points, but these new lenses are really incredible. They're almost silent. In fact, I can use just regular mechanical shutter and I've found that if I'm in any situation with ambient noise, this is just about silent. Of course, with all of the Hasselblad lenses, you do have manual focus override. So even if you're in autofocus, as long as the autofocus isn't engaged, you can just turn the collar to fine tune or whatever it is that you wanna do. I actually set mine up for back button autofocus, which is actually on all the time. You just turn it into manual focus and then just use the AFD button on the back of the camera. This is, works really well for me because I'm kind of a manual focus kind of guy, but there are times where I just need to do something quickly. And so I go back and forth between the two. But I think the autofocus is a major improvement on this system. Now let's talk about video capabilities on the X2D, which I'm very excited about. There aren't any. I don't think that any medium format camera really should have 1080 or 4K video with a sensor this size. It's just too big. There's too much downsampling, pixel binning, whatever they gotta do to get the file to the right size. And I just never felt that on any mirrorless medium format camera, the video's been any good. So that is now off of the X2D. This is the stills only camera. Thank goodness. The X1D uses the same battery from the X1D2 and the 907X, the same charger, etc. So if you upgraded this camera, your batteries and accessories will all still work. The battery is CPA rated on this camera for about 420 shots. The camera does feature USB-C power delivery. So if for some reason you need more robust power, you can use external power from a power brick or something. It also features fast charging. What's kind of funny is the other day when I plugged this in, I put it behind my computer, I brought all the photos in, I was so excited to start editing. I 
forgot to turn the camera off and I thought, oh great, the battery's probably drained. Well, it was 100% charged when I remembered it like, you know, 15 minutes later. And actually it was like less than 50%. So it is pretty quick. So let's talk for a second about the new lenses. So the new lenses, there is a 38 millimeter, a 55 millimeter and a 90 millimeter. They are all F 2.5. The 90 millimeter was not ready at the time that I'm filming this, but I am very curious about this lens. I love the 80 millimeter and I actually like the older 90 millimeter as well, but this one is probably gonna be even better if it's anything like these other two lenses that they did send over. I'll review that at a later time, but I can share with you my experience with the 55 millimeter and 38 millimeter. Both are extremely light. They are much quieter, as I mentioned earlier, than the previous generation of lenses. Hasselblad are calling these V-series lenses, and you can tell just by first glance that there's a considerable aesthetic departure from the first generation of Hasselblad lenses. There's a lot more going on here. They don't have the, the minimal stark aesthetic as much. We do have a focus ring on here as well as a custom control ring. You can map this to a number of options. So if you want to control aperture from here, you can map it to do that. I have mine set up for exposure compensation. This is a really nice upgrade from the previous generation. These also feature kind of a clutch system here. So if I want to go into immediate manual focus, I just pop up the clutch and it also gives me my depth of field scale. So if you're doing something technical, you can get your full depth of field scale here. Now, one of the things that I want to note about really all of the Hasselblad lenses, they are all top tier in terms of image quality. You know, you've got to consider we're working with medium format. So the sensor is going to be bigger than full frame. And we are also dealing with very high resolution. So they started out with a 50 megapixel sensor Sensor, and I'm sure it was part of the roadmap all along to move up to 100. And if you're gonna be future-proof, you gotta realize that one day they're probably gonna be a higher resolution than this. So all of the lenses that Hasselblad have done from an optic standpoint have been just the best in terms of resolution. They also feature nice bokeh. They're really good lenses as they ought to be. So in terms of comparable alternatives to the X2D, well, we're talking about medium format mirrorless, so there really aren't a whole lot of them. If you went with something like the X1D2, which is a camera that I like a lot, it gives you outstanding image quality. I think that there's enough feature upgrades on the X2D that really make this the camera to go with moving forward. Of course, we could also compare this with the 907X. X1D2 and 907X are both 50 megapixel cameras. If that is acceptable for you in terms of resolution, they're both great cameras to go with. The 907X is very different in terms of ergonomics and handling. It's one of the most unique cameras that I've ever used and I absolutely love it, but it's just a very different beast than the X2D. So the only other two medium format mirrorless alternatives that you're gonna find are the Fujifilm GFX 100 and the GFX 100S. Now the 100S and the 100 are both great cameras. The 100S is probably the closest in terms of size and handling. I think this one has much better ergonomics and it doesn't have as nice a viewfinder and there's a lot of sacrifices that you would make with the 100S, which means the closest to apples to apples comparison with the X2D would be the GFX 100. Now, to Fujifilm's credit, they did an excellent job with that camera. I've had experience now with both of these cameras and both of these systems. There are a couple reasons though why for me Hasselblad was the route to go. Came down to two simple things. First of all is ergonomics. I love the Scandinavian design of these bodies. I think they're very comfortable to use, very easy to work with. I'm not a fan of massive cameras. Now if you like big cameras, well the GFX 100 is that. It is a big camera. So ergonomics was the first decision for me. The second one came down to the optical quality of the lenses. Now while I can say that Fujifilm definitely have more options with their lenses, particularly when you get into zooms and things like that. I just think the optical quality on what we've got with Hasselblad is just so much better. Every lens that I have used with Hasselblad has been outstanding. Some of my favorites, the 21 millimeter, if you need an ultra wide angle lens, I use the 45 and the 45P all the time. In fact, since I've gotten the 45P, it just kind of lives on the camera. I love the new lenses. The 38 is excellent. The 55 is a new favorite. Another older one that I like a lot is that 80 millimeter f1.9. You saw that in a lot of the test shots. Another one that I really love is the 135 millimeter f2.8. It gives you a really outstanding portrait focal length and it has the option to extend it as well if you need more range. But for me, optical performance is kind of top of the list, especially when you're talking about resolutions of 
100 megapixels. So my initial impressions with the X2D, I absolutely love this camera. I think it is outstanding. And I wanna note that I pushed this camera pretty hard right up to the limits of what it really can do, especially with the dancer shots that I did earlier. When you're dealing with a lot of motion and a lot of things that can happen really quickly, I wouldn't necessarily grab a medium format camera with a prime lens to go with, but I wanted to push the camera right up to the limit of what it could do just to see what I could get. And I was actually really impressed with the results. So I will follow up with a full review after I've had a little bit more time with this camera, but I wanna thank Hasselblad for allowing me to preview this a little bit early and share it with you guys. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments or anything you'd like to see in the full review. Until the next video, I'll catch you guys then. Later. <laughs>